marker. Hey guys, welcome back to Blade Show 2022. I'm here with Giant Mouse. I have Jim Word and Jesper Vox. Welcome guys. We're Thanks excited to us. see both of you. Yeah, we're always excited to see you. Oh, Blade <laughs> Show. I mean, it feels like it's a pretty good attendance this year, right? It seems like it, yeah. It's we're, a good we're, show. We're all happy with uh, the crowds coming by. Yeah, I think, how's the booth been? Good. Good? Busy? Yeah. Pretty busy. I mean, yeah. I feel like I went over there once. Glad, glad we have help. Yeah. More help this year than we've ever had, yeah. And you got this guy working the counter? Yeah, yeah, which is different because uh, in the past uh, when we've done these big shows, uh, which was three years ago now, Jens and Jesper each had their tables with their sure. custom knives. Uh, so it's really kind of nice uh, for me to have Jesper, yeah. you know, spending the whole three days in the booth with us. I yeah. mean, you can't ask for a better attendant, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and side note, Jens is not with us today. Um, unfortunately, he's not with us. He's back home, but we do want to make sure that we mention that Jens is an integral part of the business. We do miss him. Um, it's always great to see him and Jesper both, and Jim as well. But yeah, so yep. Jens, we love you. A couple things today, guys. Um, Jim and Jesper were kind enough to bring over one of the newer models that they've debuted in the recent months. This is the Nazca, I believe, correct? In the recent days. Days, excuse me, days. <laughs> we, we, I, we dropped it yesterday. <laughs> that's, I forget that I see things early. No, I'm just playing. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about so, it. So it's the Nazca, it's, it's completely different from what we usually would do when you look at it like that. Sure. Because uh, the lines are different. It's not typical giant mouse. But once you get it in hand, and we've had a lot of guys at the booth, it's like, I, I want to check it out. It's so different from, from what you usually do. And once they get it in hand, they get like, okay, now I get it. Because the ergos are what you'd be used to um, from giant mouse. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Just fits the hand perfectly. You still have the jumping where we always have it. Sure. In the right position instead of back here where you have absolutely no use for it. Basically, so, it, it looks like something we normally wouldn't do, sure. but it feels like something we normally would do. Sure. Uh, I took the prototype the last three months. I've been carrying that on and off. Okay. Uh, out in the woods. I go a lot into the woods. In my area, we have a lot of trees. <laughs> Because I was like, I'm not sure this is going to work like all the other knives for like outdoors. Sure. Which is what we usually do a lot of knives for. But after using it, the prototype has just become one of my uh, my go-to knives for, for going outdoor. And that point is, looks like it's fragile. It's not. It's a pretty strong tip of this. Okay. Knife as well. yeah. So Plus, let me ask you a question real quick. Yeah. Because I know you, you explained how, you know, this isn't typically what you would see coming out of Giant Mouse, no. right? A little bit different in that aspect. What made you decide to go a little bit farther outside the box than you typically would? Well, sometimes there's a design you just have to do. Okay. So this was like a, started out with a, with a drawing that I did. And, and once Jens saw it, he was like, there's something about that. And then we went back and forth and we ended up with it. And we, was not, we were not even sure we wanted to do it because it was so not us okay. in, in many ways. But um, then we were like, we have to do it. I think we've been working on this for like one and a half or two years, actually. Oh, all right. Um, and it just all of a sudden was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we Zoom like once a week or once yeah. every other week, you know, because sure. I'm in the U.S. and these guys are in Denmark. So we, it's always kind of a weird time of day for all of us. It's like 8 p.m. for them, <laughs> 2 in the afternoon for me, just because it works and so over the past year and a half or so, we we talk about all of the different projects that are sort of in various stages of progress, you know, sure. from yeah, just initial design sketches, uh, you know, to drawings to the manufacturers, to they're in production, whatever. And this knife, we've just always called the alien because okay. it's just looks it's pretty alien, yeah. right? I mean, it's, it's even got some like just funky angles, you know, that oh, sure. just, it's kind of, you know, to me, I'm like, yeah, I could see Sigourney Weaver carrying this thing. <laughs> so that. that was the, the working title or the working name for this knife. That we for, you know, so then we're like, okay, now it's coming close to being a production knife that we're going to start receiving. What are we going to call this, guys? Well, we've always called it the alien. That'd be kind of cool, but, you know, and what I always do, you're going to love this. First thing I do when we come up with a new name for knife, I go to Blade HQ's website. 
and I put in the name. And, Wait, and if it doesn't pop this? up, I figure the knife doesn't exist, you right? You this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that's I, promotion right I, Yeah, like, I think, seriously, I'm like, like if, 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 if yeah. Lady doesn't have a knife called Alien, <laughs> so like five things pop up with Alien, and then I'm like, all right, screw that. We can't call it Alien, guys. It doesn't exist. So it's like, all right, so what are we going to do? I mean, what are we going to call it? And then I just kind of started thinking, Every time these guys are talking about design and designing a knife, they're always talking about the lines. And they spend like just hours going over the minutia of how a line is gonna work. And if the manufacturer can't do something that they've designed, then, I mean, we've had times where we've scrapped a whole design because it's like, okay, if you can't, you know, if, sure. you can't, if it's gonna cause a problem where something's not gonna function the way we wanted based on the, the lines, then, you know, forget it. So I just started thinking about lines, and then I just, you know, I would watch my, my kids, a lot of the ancient, and my kids are older now, they're like adults, but we watch like, you know, the ancient aliens oh, yeah. show and oh, stuff. Yeah. The good so yeah, so yeah. the Nazca lines, <laughs> you know, I've always, yeah. I've always been a fan of, you know, those big, uh, you know, geoglyphs out in the oh, desert yeah. in yeah. Peru that are the Nazca lines, and I'm like, huh. Nazca. So go to Blade HQ, type in Nazca, nothing. Doesn't I'm exist. sorry, your search is empty or whatever. Uh, awesome. Yes. Query not so, hey guys, Query so we, we got a name for the knife. We're yeah. going to call it the Nazca. Yeah, that's, no, that, I, I love hearing stories about that, especially the design aspect. So you guys are in a little bit of a different situation. You hit on it, right? So yes, we're in Jens. You guys are overseas in Denmark, yep. right? Jim, you're in Michigan, correct? Yep. Now in Michigan. Michigan. Two, now in Michigan. Two years now. Yeah. Yep. The new home. The new home. Right? Go MSU, right? Yeah. All right, go green. Is. Go green. See, yeah. I remember. What's it like working with two guys that are obviously designers and you handling most of, I'd say, correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong here, more of the logistics, right? Yeah. Just the running of the business uh, done day to day pretty much. Sure. Uh, but now Jesper uh, is, is doing that with me every day. I mean, we're texting and Zooming every day pretty much. Uh, on a on a day to day, as you know, Jens yeah. has Anso of Denmark yeah. and his his uh, kitchen knife line, and um, he's got his uh, his own uh, you know production facility basically right behind his house awesome. with his employees. So you know, as much as he'd love to be day to day giant mouse, oh, he's got his, uh, his hands are full basically. So um, Jesper, up until a year and a half ago. Had a full time day job, which a lot of people don't know. As oh, yeah. you wanted to talk about, yeah, th I had no things, idea. Things you things you don't know about uh, yeah. your 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 favorite knife yeah. community people. I had so no idea. Uh, he worked uh, was a social worker with kids uh, okay. did, did, did for for many many years, and um, but but resigned from that so that he could start spending pretty much full time working awesome. with me and now my team of two here okay. in the U.S. So we have our marketing manager Bridget that we yeah. hired. Uh, Bridget. Yep, you met her. In Park yeah. City, and she's Great. been with us over a year now, and uh, just doing amazing things with marketing. Sure. And we just hired a new guy, uh, Jeremy, who is actually a lot of people in the knife community know him because he had a review okay. channel years ago. What was his channel? Um, J Farmboy Jack. Okay. Farmboy yeah. Jack. Yeah. All right. Jack, Jack, Jack Farmboy. Farmboy. Jack Farmboy. Okay. Yep. Well, and that uh, out. he started on uh, Wednesday when I picked him up. Uh, 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 you know. Oh, so he's new. He lives 30 minutes from me, and I picked him up on my way to the airport. Oh. So day one, he was flying here to Blade Show with me. Uh, so nice we're grilled. He's, yeah, they're both Bridget and Jeremy are running the booth for That's us. Awesome. So they're great. He's going to be great. So we talk about obviously, you know, working with these guys, but I don't know if the community has a lot of background on you per se. I know we've talked about a little bit how you got into some things, but I know you started as more of an aficionado and a collector, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that and how you kind of yeah. got tied up in this. Yeah. So, I mean, as uh, you know, probably 14 years old, my oldest brother gave me a little Gerber silver knife. All with, right. Uh, Lock back, Seiki City, Japan. Sure. I still have it. Pearl handles, uh, you know, nickel silver bolsters with the little pearl scales, and it just fascinated me. Uh, and, you know, I collected a lot of things even before, you know, earlier when I was younger than that. I've always been collecting things. Um, this then I was like, I'd never had a knife before, so I'm like, man, this is really nice. So that just like lit a fire. And I just started looking for any information I could get on knives. Started from there. You know, finding magazines on knives, having my mom take me around to knife shows, 
uh, just the local retail shows, you know, I where like it. the old time, kind of like there's an area of Blade Show where it's like the old timers oh, yeah. have their collections yeah, out, all the and, guys. and the same stuff's there every year, and you wonder, oh, yeah. do they even ever sell anything? But <laughs> they do, because guys like me will walk by and say, huh, that's really cool, and it's from like the 1940s, and I'll take one of those. Thank you. you. Know? Yeah. yeah, so... So I just, I've just loved knives my whole life. I remember when I moved out to California after uh, graduating from Michigan State, go green. Go green. Um, I love uh, it. And then my wife came out a year later because uh, we met there in school. Uh, we got married maybe a year later and then we had our first son and I went to the Bay Area Custom Knife Show. Back in the day, okay. in the early 90s, there was an awesome knife show, kind of like, not as big as Blade, but... It was a big show uh, at a convention center in, uh, in San Jose, near San Jose or uh, Sunnyvale, down, down south of San Francisco. Right. Anyways, Tracy's pushing a stroller around with her baby son, Kenny, in it. Well, and she had nine. made him because she's a crafter and uh, designer of things. And she, she made him a, a stuffed knife. A fixed blade knife. Yeah. Oh, God, I hope we still have that somewhere because he this. had it in his stroller and everybody loved this thing. I mean, she could have sold a million of them at the but show, yeah. right? And then, uh, you know, I've designed some of my own things for Carpe Diem EDC. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Which Carpe I don't have any to, uh, time to, to spend on. And uh, I, I wish I had more time. But, Stop throwing uh, so much stuff at me. Um, yes, oh I'd love to do more with Carpe Diem EDC. I mean, there's still, I've got, you know... The product just, as long as I just kind of keep it, you know, stocked, sure. you know, I just have it's a nice. 3PL that just sells, ships it out when people order it. Yeah. And I, I look at Instagram and I see all the photos. Of people. There's always a, one of my coins and sure. somebody's knife picture or somebody's whatever. Somebody's pocket check, right? Pop yeah, so it's just that EDC. I just love the whole, it's not just knives. Oh, yeah. I, and watches, you know, I mean, that's kind of how I met these guys initially. Yeah, I, we I all love watches. Pieces. We should probably show those off real quick. It's, uh, but let's let's see the collection here real quick. Since we're talking, guys, we might, we're talking EDC. Yeah, we this is a relatively new one for me. It's just a time. Time Factors is a is a guy uh, out of uh, you know England, and he uh, been around for many years. He does very small batches, and he had this. Uh, I love dive watches. This is a, That's a pretty. A, uh, so he's got the Smiths brand now. So sure. it's a Smiths Caribbean One Thousand. It's a, just a great summer orange, and they're cheap i mean it's like you know whatever 500 bucks you know sure. for a fun watch i like that. uh yeah i do too because you know i mean yeah i love watches i've got some high end some low end so i'll take we, that we, yeah we love watches he's got a yeah he's a loves he, rolex i do too but great summer watch 500 bucks just that i had in a grave. great summer watch that you had did that he happened that to have engraved that's that what I, he said i had him to have engraved uh, panjay panjay did this one uh he, he engraved it for me so all right uh, it, was a, it was a project uh, he's out in Thailand. He's a great engraver. Sure. The funny thing about this is, listen up now. If you have a Rolex and you have it engraved, Rolex doesn't think that this is a Rolex anymore. Oh. So you can't have servers on it. Anymore. Really? Yeah. All right. So I'm just waiting for this to break so I can. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope you guys heard that. So next yeah. time when you see yes, we're going to a garbage can, just start yeah. looking in it yeah. because you might find a treasure. So but sounds it won't good. Work. No, but I mean this is fantastic, guys. I think it's good for people to understand kind of where you guys come from. Yeah. You know, it's I mean. You have a bunch of hobbyists that are obviously watching, obviously customers that, you know, have had a great experience with both of you. The and company. old Land Rovers. And old Land Rovers, yes. I need no, one. But I have seen the collections of Land Rovers that um, Jens and yes, we both have. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes me jealous every time I see them. So it's fantastic. We're no. doing this because we, we're having fun, basically. Awesome. I mean, neither one of us really need to be doing Giant Mouse. Sure. But we decided, Jens and Jesper and I, to start Giant Mouse because it would be fun yeah. for the three of us as friends to just launch a brand and do something that's kind of simple and we were only going to do a couple of designs a year and sure. small batches and it'd be super easy and none of us would have to spend a lot of time on it and then it just, people started like, why can't we ever buy anything from Giant Mouse? You never have anything available and we're like, okay, so now we got to come up <laughs> okay. with an unlimited line of the, you know, the Ace line so that sure. we'll have more product for people to buy and and it, now it's just kind of snowballed into this thing where we, pe there's a lot of expectations sure. of people now for Giant Mouse to be, you know, yeah. a, oh, a, yeah. a, a player. And the, so we're and like, a okay, premium player, right? we'll do our best. You know, we're just three guys. I just noticed that you're doing exactly the same as Nick Chabas. So, I, you know, I learned that from Nick yeah, Chabas. No mask. No I've, mask. You, I've watched like hundreds of hours of Nick Chabas videos so I can learn how to do that. Yeah, I so love Nick, that. Shout out to That's Nick. Yeah. We love Nick. Shout out to Nick. <laughs> No, this is fantastic, guys. We appreciate you guys coming in. I think it's always great for us to learn and yeah. understand where, who you guys are, what you're doing. Thank you. We appreciate you bringing the NASCAR. Um, guys, this is something that I think dealers should have already or no, will no, have no, soon. No, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, our, our 
full order has been coming in chunks. Okay. We were expecting to have it long before Blade Show, actually, but we needed to debut a knife at Blade Show, so we had enough to launch. But the, we'll have the rest uh, probably by this coming week to start shipping out to dealers. That's awesome. Yep. So dealers uh, all around the world will be getting them soon. I'll show you guys a little action here. So it's nice, right? We have the thumb studs here, obviously, for relief. And then we have the multi-lock action right here. You can mess with. Obviously, we can release it to drop the blade. You can see that as I almost cut my pinky off just for you guys in the camera. <laughs> But you also have this nice backspacer on that adds a little bit of weight to it, a little bit more security yeah. in the pocket. I actually like it. One of the things I really like about having these, these heavier spacers is that it actually plants it in your pocket. Yeah. Right? So the weight actually pulls that clip back down in, so I'm not worried about popping up all the time, which is something that's a nice little feature. Yeah. yeah. It's always a pleasure, guys. We appreciate you guys coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, you know, for you guys at home, if you haven't met Jesper and Jim, you need to find them at the Giant Mouse booth. Come say hello to Bridget. The new guy's name? Jeremy. Jeremy. And Jeremy yeah. as well. Sounds like they got a solid If you heard the game. show, swing by Booth 528. There it is, guys. Well, we appreciate it, guys. For you at home, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also find, follow Giant Mouse on Instagram. Yep. You guys have a YouTube channel right now? We do, and uh, we have plans now and people now to help us start doing a lot more awesome. YouTube stuff. We so, haven't done much with it. Awesome. Well, go follow them, guys. Make sure you stay up to date. I'm sure Jim and Yes World debut, debut some cool stuff on the channel. But, uh, hey, guys, thanks yeah. for coming in. Appreciate right. it. Talk to you guys next time. Thanks, man. Thanks.